All right, this uh, video will develop some more probability rules and more multiplication rules involving probability. Let me start, probably the easiest way to start this is with an example to sort of get the ball rolling, or the dice in this case. So roll two dice. List all of the possible outcomes. So how many outcomes are there going to be? Well, we saw a little bit of this. We have each dice, or each die, if you will, Each die has six outcomes. So the two of them have six times six equals 36 outcomes. The way you look at it is this could be those for die number one. And that could be for die number two. And each time you roll die one, you have one of six possibilities. But independently of that roll, that's why we're doing six times six, the other die can have any of six possible outcomes that are completely independent of the other die. So uh, if I get, say, a one on one die, I still have six possibilities for the other die. You can see how you would be able to count up all 36 of them. Uh, another way we could look at them, and this is the way that gamblers look at it is to look at the sum of the dots that are rolled. When you roll two dice, the lowest possible sum that you can get is a two, and the highest possible sum that you can get is a twelve. The only way to get a two is if both die show ones. The only way to get a 12 is if both dice show sixes. And then you can get any number in between, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12 is way over there. But let me show you the ways that you can get a three. On the first dice, you can get a 1, and on the second one, you can get a 2. Or, you could be reversed. So there's two ways of getting a 3. For a 4, you can get a 1 and a 3, a 2 and a 2, or a 3 and a 1. For a 5, you can get a 1 and a 4, a 2 and a 3, a 3, then a 2, or a 4 and a 1. For a 6, you can get a 1 and a 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, and 5, 1. For 7, you can get a 1 and a 6, 2 and a 5, 3 and a 4, 4 and a 3, 5 and a 2, 6 and a 1. And for 8, you can't do a 1 and a 7, but we can do a 2 and a 6. And then we can do uh, a 3 and a 5, a 4 and a 4, 5 and a 3, 6 and a 2. For a 9, you can get a 3 and a 6, a 4 and a 5, 5 and a 4, and then a 6 and a 3. And then a 10, you can get a 4 and a 6, 5 and a 5, or a 6 and a 4. And then for an 11, you can get a 5, 6, or 6, 5. 
you can count them up. There's a total of 36 outcomes. Now in Vegas, the game of craps is where you roll two dice and you can win on the first roll if you get a 7 or 11. So what is the probability of rolling a 7 or 11? Well, for 7 or 11, let's take a look. Uh, for 7, we have what? 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, or 6, 1. 7 happens to be your best chance number on a roll because it has the largest number of possible outcomes associated with it. An 11 only has two outcomes associated with it. That is the 5, 6, and the 6, 5. So between the two of them, how many outcomes do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 of those and then 2 more for 11. So the probability of a 7 or 11 equals 8 out of 36. What is the probability of rolling snake eyes? Snake eyes are when you get just a one and a one. So we only had one outcome associated with that. So for snake eyes, to get a sum of a two, the only way to do that is for both die to be a one. And so there's only one outcome associated with this. So the probability of two equals one out of 36. Your probability of losing on your initial roll is the lowest. Your probability of winning on your initial roll is much higher. Let A and B be events independent events. Then the number of items in A and B equals the number of items in A times the number of items in B. Now what I'm going to do is take that and I'm going to divide both sides by the size of the sample space squared. So the right hand side is pretty easy. I'll get n of a over n of s times n of b over n of s. And so you probably recognize the right hand side of this as the probability of a times the probability of b. Now on the left side, it is actually equal to the probability of A and B. What I'm talking about is sample space for A and the same sample space for B. Then the size of the sample space under consideration when I'm talking about A and B is the size of the sample space times itself. Anyways. When A and B are independent events, we have this formula. If two, six sided dice are rolled, 
what is the probability of getting a three on the first dice die <laughs> and a four on the second die. So I think that was a question. What is the probability? So we can take a look at this way then. I want a three for the first die and I want a four for the second die. So that's the probability of a three times the probability of a four. Now, when I'm talking about the probability of three, I'm talking about the probability of rolling a three on that first die. So you can always keep this in mind that the first one is die one and this is die two. So the probability of rolling any particular number on a six sided die is one out of six. Same goes for the second die. And now together, I can get one out of 36. And you can tell if you look in the table, there was only one spot in the table that had a three first and then a four second. Draw a card from a standard deck of 52 cards. Note value and put the card back. Now any of these things when we're talking about probability I draw a card from a standard deck of 52. After I draw it I put it back the understanding is that we will take the cards now and shuffle them again so that drawing the next card is independent of the first card. So I'll say shuffle and draw a second card. Many times you'll see people say randomly select one card out of the deck with replacement. They'll mean that they put it back. That's all they mean. So what is the probability of two face cards Well, for those that know a standard deck of 52 cards in and out, this will not, none of this will be news to you. Some people actually do not know anything about cards, so I'm going to elucidate at least what you need for probability. You should know that the whole theory of probability was specifically invented for the purposes of trying to gain advantages during gambling. So, talking about games of dice or cards is completely in line with its historical development. So what's the probability of two face cards? Let's take a look at what the face cards are. Perhaps you should know what they are. Um, we have a jack, a queen, and a king. Those are the face cards in a, in a deck. However, the jack has three different or four different kinds of jacks. So you have um, spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds. And they all have that possibility. So each of these have four possibilities for a total of 12 face cards. Furthermore, the spades and clubs are black, while the hearts and diamonds are red. 
that information will be known. I'll, I'll give more information as it is needed. But right now, just knowing that there's 12 of them out of 52 is what we need. So I want the probability of a face card and a second face card. So that's the probability of drawing a face card in one pull times the probability of one pull again and getting a face card. So as I mentioned, there's 12 face cards out of 52. So together, that's 144 out of 2,704. Suppose that each month the probability of being selected for jury duty is 1 over 100. What is the probability of going a whole year without being called for jury duty. This is a little bit strange. I, I think I need to explain this a little bit. We have to consider the chances of you being selected for jury duty each subsequent month as being independent from the last month. That means whether you were selected or not, you still have a probability of one out of a hundred each month. So that may not be true. I know that once you serve on jury duty many times, you're not on any lists for a while, but let's just assume that it's always one out of a hundred so that I can do this problem. So for the context of this problem, I am going to use the letters NJD for no jury duty. And you might want to remember this, the probability of no jury duty equals 1 minus the probability of jury duty, which is 1 minus 1 out of 100. Getting common denominators, this is 100 over 100 minus 1 over 100 equals 99 over 100. So that's in one month. So each month you have no jury duty. So we could look at it this way for 12 months. I want no jury duty and no jury duty and no jury duty. And I think what I'm trying to say here is I want to do this for a total of 12 times. So that's 12 times. So that, of course, that equals the probability of no jury duty times the probability of no jury duty times, and of course, this is 12 times as well. Well, of course, each one of these is 99 over 100. And of course, that is 12 times. And so this equals 99 over 100 raised to the 12th power. And so I think in this, that number doesn't really say much to me, but I'm going to write an approximation in decimals here 
to four decimal places, I get 0 0.8864, or if you want, 88.64%. All right, if you walk into a party with 30 people, what is the probability that no one has your birthday? So we're going to look at it as each person that I look at, I'm going to compare myself to, or you, among each of the people, they either share your birthday or they don't have your birthday. So the probability that any person does not have your birthday is one minus, uh, let me see, one out of 365. I mean, you do only have one birthday out of 365. So this equals 364 out of 365. So the probability that any one person does not have your birthday is equal to that. So what's the probability that none of the 30 people do? So you're going to be looking at it this way. The probability that the first person does not have your birthday and the second person does not have your birthday and the third person does not have your birthday and dot, 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 and until we get to the 30th person. So then you can take this as the probability of the first times the probability of the second dot 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 times the probability of the 30th. And each one of those is 364 out of 365. And there's a total of 30 of them. And let me go ahead and give a rough approximation. That's 0 0.079. The next topic we want to talk about is conditional probability. And these are when events are not necessarily independent of each other. So if I write something like this, A slash B, this is the probability of A being true given that B is already known to be true. Let me show you what I mean as an example. Suppose you draw two cards from a standard deck of 52. However, you do not, I guess they don't, <laughs> replace any cards. Now we're describing dependent events because we can look at this as taking them, take a card, put it to the side, and then grab a second card from the deck. The first card 
has 1 out of 52 for any kind of possibility that you could imagine. But once you have pulled the first card out, there are only 51 cards left over. So now all the probabilities are going to be out of 51 and not 52. Once you pull out the second card, then if you were to pull out any cards after that, then its probability would be out of 50 since the first two cards have changed the probability of the cards following them. What is the probability of drawing two face cards? So this is exactly like the previous example, except now I'm not putting the first card back. So now if we want the probability of a face card and a face card, and I try to do the probability of a face card and the probability of a face card, this time it's a little bit weird because the first one has a 12 out of 52 chance. So that would be the first, let's hit, call it the first card. But the second card here only has 51 cards to choose from. So when I do the second face card, assume that the first face, first card was a face card. All right. Now there's only 11 face cards left out of 51 cards. So this gives us a total of 132 out of 2,652. What is the probability of drawing a face card and then an ace? So for this one, we want the probability of a face card and the probability of an ace. So I'm going to use the letter A for the second one then. So the probability of the face card times, now let me leave this here, the probability of an ace. I'm going to change that in a minute. The face card we know is 12 out of 52. Now when I'm talking about the ace, I assume that the first card was a face card. So one of the face cards are gone. Now an ace is not a face card. There happens to be four aces in a, in a deck, but there's only 51 cards left. So here we get 48 out of 2652. I'm going to write this in a slightly different notation than I did there. I can do this. P, F, and A equals P, F, times P A slash F. That's because this second part here is the probability of an ace on that second card, provided that the first one was a face card. So you see the conditional probability. And this right here is really the only multiplication rule that you need to know. Because when they're independent, this part right here will become the probability of A just because of the, the style of problem that you have. So I, if, you, if you are going to memorize or choose only one formula to use here, it's this one. All right, what I've done is grabbed a, a set of exercises from the textbook here. And I intend to do problems 30 and 32. So take a look at what we have here and pause the video if you need to read it. I don't really like to read questions to my students. And then let me go ahead and put the symbols down here. I want the probability that someone is Jungian, that's young, given that the psychiatrist is a Freudian psychiatrist. So take a look here. We have 735 psychiatrists. 
and I am doing what here? If I'm pulling one of or selecting one of these psychiatrists at random, so I would like the probability of being a Jungian, given that the person is known to be a Freudian. So what I have to do is take a look at the Freudian method. 490 people believe in the Freudian method. So that's what I'm going to put in my denominator. But for the numerator, I need the number of psychiatrists that believe in both Jung and Freud's methods because we're talking about Freud people here. So how many people believe in both Jung and Freud's methods? And I believe the answer is here. 215 of them believe in Freud's and Jung's methods. So I will put a 215 in that numerator. For number 32, what is the probability of a Sullivan given Jungian? Now take a look at all the people that are Jungian people. How many of them do we have? Right here, 510 believe in the Jungian method. So my denominator is 510. And now my numerator has to be uh, those Sullivans and Jungs. So how many people do we have in both Sullivan and Jung? So 98 believe in both of them. And so that probability is 98 out of 510. Here's another problem out of the textbook. And once again, I will attack the even number problems. Uh, let's see what we have here. You're taking marbles out of a bag. We've got 20 blue, 10 red, 5 green, and 1 purple. So there is a total of N equals 36 marbles. I'll be needing that probably. Um... You choose two marbles one at a time, but do not put the first marble back before selecting a second marble. All right, so we want the probability first of a red marble and then a green marble, like so. So the probability of red times the probability of green given red. And so, look at the first one that you choose. In the first marble, what's the probability of it being red? Well, we have 10 red marbles, so it's 10 out of a total of 36. Now, assuming that first marble is red, what's the probability that the second marble is green? Well, now, the, the first marble is red uh, means that we now have 35 marbles. Since the first marble is red, while it changes the number of marbles in the bag to 35, it does not change the number of green marbles. So let me put that there. How many green marbles are there? There's five green marbles, and that goes there. And so you get 50 out of 380. My bad, 1260. Now let's take a look at the question number 10. Here we want the probability of getting a purple marble and then a blue marble. So that's the probability of getting a purple marble times the probability of getting a blue marble given that the first one was purple. So let's take a look here. Uh, how many purple marbles are there in this bag? One. So that's 1 out of 36. Now that purple marble is taken, there's only 35 marbles left. I want a blue marble. There's 20 of those. There's still 20 blue marbles out of the 35 left. And so that's 20 out of 1260. All 
I grabbed some more questions out of the textbook. Hopefully you're familiar with what it's like to go to the bowling alley and try to choose yourself a bowling ball. You'll notice that most of the balls in a bowling alley are made for right-handed bowlers, but there's a few made for left-handed bowlers, and there are a few, I believe, that are neutral, neither left nor right. And then, of course, I've got the totals of the colors there. Throughout all these problems, we're going to assume that one bowling ball is selected, and if you need this extra for you, select it at random. So we want the probability of left-hander given that it is black. So first off, we need to find out how many black bowling balls are because that'll be the size of our sample space. So take a look at the black ones. I see I have a total of 390 black ones. And then all I got to do is look in that list to how many of those ones are lefty, and that's 95 of them. Number 36, what's the probability that the bowling ball is swirled given that it's neutral? So what you want to do is find all the neutral bowling balls, and let's see if there's any neutral ones. There we are. I have a total of 100 neutral bowling balls. Now I just have to pick how many of those that are swirled. So if I look in my neutral row and look at it, the intersection of that with the swirl column I have 10. So this is 10 out of 100. My next question, what is the probability the bowling ball is orange? So we want the probability of orange given that it's for a right-hander. So let me go and find all the right-handers. How many right-handers do we have? We have 650 right-handers. How many of those are orange? Let's take a look. The orange column and the right row, I get 220. The next question, what is the probability that the bowling ball is the ball is for... Oh, we have to fix that. <laughs> the probability that the bowling ball is for a left-hander given that it is not swirled. Ooh. Now, let me find all the not swirled balls in this bowling alley. So let's take a look. We have a total of a thousand bowling balls and 260 of them are swirled. That means 740 of them are not swirled. So let me put 740 as that denominator. Now, of those that are not swirled, I need to find all of them that are left-handers. So, what does that mean I'm going to do? I am going to, I don't want swirled, so I want these here. The total lefties that are not swirled is 85 plus 95. And that is a total of 180 out of 740. My next question is similar to the first one. Here, I want the probability of not swirled given that it's for a left-hander. So now my denominator will consist of all the left-handed bowling balls. How many of those do we have? We have a total of 250 left-handed bowling balls. Now, of those left-handed bowling balls, how many are not swirled? So let's take a look at them. We have 85 plus 95 are not swirled. And here I get 180, but now this time the denominator is 250 and not 740. Here's the final question, and it's a complicated one because I have multiple not situations here. So what is the probability that the bowling ball is not for a right-hander? So we want not 
are given that it's not black, not B. Well, let me find how many not black bowling balls we have, and that'll be my denominator. So when I go up here, uh, black ones, how many black? We have 390 black bowling balls. That means we have 610 of them are not black. So we have 610 not black bowling balls. Now we need to find all those that are not red. So look in the black column here. So when we're talking about not black. I'm talking about these two columns. And now I want not right. So I want the intersection of rows left and neutral with columns orange and swirl. So with left, I have 85 and 70. Those are the orange and swirled ones. So 85 and 70. And then I needed the row for neutral. And once again, I want the orange and swirl ones of those. So 45 and 10. And that's 210 out of 610. 